welcome to the Saturday Night Live After Party. For this month's off-week blowout extravaganza podcast, we'll be discussing Season 48's three most recent episodes, hosted by Jack Harlow, Amy Schumer, and the infamous Dave Chappelle. I'm Katherine Coleman, and I am joined this week by everyone's favorite co-host, Stephen S. Pumpkins. If you'd like to connect with us, you can do so on Twitter at SNL Podcast. And if you'd like to get early access to all of our Season 48 coverage, head over to Patreon.com slash SNL Podcast. It's our patrons who make this show possible, and we are so thankful to everyone who's already come on board. All right, here we go. Oh, hello. Happy November, Steve. How's it going? Happy November. I uh, I hope you're well over there. I hear your mother's in town. Is that correct? My mother's in town. We're having a good time. Big time. We've been to, uh, we saw, I had a show on Thursday night, and then we saw Mike Birbiglia's new show on Friday. So it's been a big week. Uh, highly recommend, by the way, The Old Man in the Pool on Broadway. Fantastic okay. Fantastic show. Yeah. All right. He was great uh, just, just now in this episode, or the season of uh, Big Mouth, if you caught that. Oh, nice. So my, yeah. I, ca- I caught him in the Taylor Swift anti-hero music video, but I have missed Big Mouth. <laughs> you have your priorities. Your have, thing is have, right? Yeah, we all have our things. All right. <laughs> and Mike's having a moment in all of them. So, yeah, he is. He is. he's doing something for all of us. Yeah, That's uh, great. Did, did you have a good Halloween? You know, you're in your, your pumpkins attire. Did you wear this for Halloween? Um, I didn't. Uh, I did wear this. No, I. I didn't really attend any parties or anything this year. So <laughs> I'm really just wearing it because we're going to be talking about Dave. And I just decided to wear the jacket only because it is a uh, metaphor for my level of commitment as it has progressed through the years. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was right, still you're... early pandemic when I went full David S. Pumpkins. You heard it here first, folks. Steve is in uh, the David Pumpkins jacket and is totally <laughs> pantsless. And yes, you can see his whole body on the video version. So tune in or not. That's Up right. Here. Yeah, we're doing the portrait version. So this just keeps going down. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll a TikTok. I'll a Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, listeners, uh, if if you missed our last uh, blowout, just a, just a friendly reminder that. Uh, what we're doing now is is we're doing these monthly reviews. We're going to talk about all three episodes from the November run tonight. We're going to, Steve and I have each picked a sketch from each episode we want to talk about. Uh, and we're going to bat around some um, some listener feedback here and there. If you, if you have any in the future, you can just tweet that at us on Twitter, which is where you do the tweeting, as long as it's still there. Uh, if that goes down between now and December, we'll let you know where to find us. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you, if you have questions or you have feedback on this new format, please let us know, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress. So, uh, yeah. Even if, even if it's just to say everything's perfect. Yeah. Because yeah. Even if you like, if your feedback is we love it, also tell us that not yeah. enough people tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> Cause when we hear nothing is wrong with it, but also nothing is right with it. We, we wonder, right. are, are we doing anything right or wrong? So, yeah, tell us either way. Did anyone listen to this? (laughs) (laughs) But don't lie. Don't don't tell us what you think we want to hear. I'm fine with you lying. You can lie. No. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Not the best (laughs) tactic in data collection to encourage (laughs) dishonesty. But no, but it but it is the best tactic for Catherine's mental health. (laughs) All right. Well, we've we've got a lot to discuss. So you ready to jump in? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Up first is the the fourth episode of the season, which was Jack Harlow with musical guest Jack Harlow. Uh, so let's talk about him in general. You know what what did you think of this booking? Did he prove himself? Did you have any recollection that you'd seen him last season, etc.? Oh yeah, yeah. He he made an impression as a rapper, right. but I don't think he was. I don't think I was thinking, hey, this guy is going to be the next uh, musical guest slash host mm-hmm. uh, double feature. It was a interesting choice, and I don't think it was a horrible choice. It wasn't like he was the next Drake or, or anything like that. I still feel like, you know, this guy 
was kind of struggling, but he didn't really, you know, do anything really awful. Like he didn't start just staring into the camera and forget his lines. He, uh, he was competent Mm -hmm. and yep. I, I just think that I'm, I'm not really looking forward to another hosting stint from him. If that's okay to say, Mm -hmm. like I I had fun with it and I thought it was okay, but I'm not Mm -hmm. like, I can't wait until the next time he hosts. Yeah. Maybe if I was a bigger Jack Harlow fan, if you remember, we, we heard the name and thought maybe this was a country singer or something. That's what it sounded like more so than a rapper, but yeah, I think we're we're famously wrong about it. (laughs) (laughs) Look at us now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean i was intrigued to see how we would do hosting i wouldn't say he made a particular uh impact on me uh i was pretty indifferent towards jack carlo uh, last time he was on and then that was really my extent of knowledge on him i didn't like continue to learn more and then i was like oh he's hosting cool um ultimately like you said i think he was a pretty standard snl host like he did all right he wasn't he wasn't the stiffest host we've seen he, but he didn't he wasn't adding a lot. He wasn't making strong character choices or anything. You know, he was he was pretty middle of the road. It was like you said, like I'm not thinking he's gonna get invited back, but it wasn't it wasn't like his performance was really taking me out of the sketches and distracting me. So like, you know, average. Right. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be musical guest again and they'll probably oh, yeah, throw I'm him sure. in a he sketch seems or two. Pretty popular. <laughs> and when he is a musical guest like i mean last time he was on he he popped into like a music video sketch and i think that's great he he was great in that he can be great in that again interesting that they didn't do a rap video this time while he was hosting but, you know. <laughs> well that's what we didn't get but let's talk about what we did get so our first sketch tonight is these tableside bartenders aren't afraid to spill a little liquor to put on a good show and Steve, this was your pick. What'd you like about it? Well, I just picked it, not necessarily to say what I liked about it, but to okay. just kind of outline uh, what kind of work was going into making this show function, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a good example of what Bowen really does well. Uh, one of the many hats he wears is kind of being a uh, a guide, if you will, for a uh, a green or, or or a fresher type of host like Jack Harlow. Mm-hmm. If you if you look at the characterization here, you're basically seeing the exact same character played by both Bo and, and Jack. Uh, the intonations are the same. The the mm-hmm. the finesse, the flair. It's uh, it's almost as if Bowen is you know, creating a character, taking that process out of the equation and just showing Jack the finished product for him to then mimic. Kind of like learning a language Mm -hmm. phonetically. Uh, Mm -hmm. I feel like this was like a call and answer so that (laughs) Jack would have a more consistent performance. Every time yeah, like Bowen this was would the say o- a line. This was the only characterization Jack really made all night, and it was like very clearly influenced by what Bowen was doing. Yeah, I felt like this is how they figured out uh, a way to get Jack to be consistently funny and effective in a character, was to mm-hmm. just basically remind him every 30 seconds, this is what your character sounds like. This is what your character moves like. So if you forget, mm-hmm. just look at, like, at what Bowen is doing and then continue to do that. Uh, <laughs> Bo's done this before with uh, with other types of sketches. I think there was like an old uh, um, old military sketch where they do like uh, like they're going to do show tunes like of the time, but it's more more of a modern piece. Yeah, that was with Kristen Wiig, right? But it also included Charlie XCX, right? Oh, I, no, it was Dua Lipa. It was Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Uh, I've always loved Bowen as a as a pairing with the hosts, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I think it's it's he's well utilized in these in these roles. And I just wanted to use this sketch to to kind of outline, uh, you know, just what goes into uh, making a show work and uh, how that's a little bit different every time. Yeah, that's a very that's a very keen yeah. keen uh, observation you got there, Steve. 
it's I like it's that. I don't know if I'm observing it or just imagining it. From, from <laughs> no, what I'm I, no, because I agree. I I I picked up on it, but didn't quite. I didn't fully process it into like a an opinion. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, this sketch, uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. Like, it's not it's not a piece of exceptional writing. It's not something I was itching to go back and watch again. But when it aired, I was having a good time with it. Like, I remember I was talking to someone the next day, and they were like, I hated that. And I was like, oh, whatever. It was fun. You know, like, it was it was just stupid enough and chaotic enough for me to shrug and go along with it. So, like... You know, that first thing when when Bowen goes to pour the orange juice and it comes out in two directions, neither of which lands in the cup. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I was like, yep, yeah, that that's that's ridiculous. I love it. I'm I'm along for the ride. Um, like and so like and then they, they found a way to sort of heighten that a little bit. So the next they slid the glasses, they broke the next time they threw the bottles up, they shattered um, and those those paid off marginally. But I think I just wanted a little bit more from it because then they tried to heighten it by having this like emotional turn where they were trying it turns out they've served these people before and they're trying to prove them wrong um but that didn't really work for me because I think I wasn't I wasn't invested in Bowen and Jack as characters I was just interested in them as like watching two idiots so their like <laughs> emotional arc I didn't care about their emotional arc even when it turned so like um I don't know. It didn't meet the full potential that I thought it could, but it was it was definitely a good time. Like I for what it was, I'm like, yeah, that's a good sketch. It it made me laugh. It was surprising. It was stupid as hell. What more could you I mean, you know, that that, that that's all we really ask for at the end of the day. <laughs> that says it all right there. Everything <laughs> I, I didn't say was said by you there. That's that's a perfect summary. All right. Well, that was the uh tableside bartenders. The next sketch, my pick. Is David Pumpkins returns? Preguntas. Uh, and yeah, so like at this moment, you just need to like cue that clip from Titanic when the old old Rose says, "It's been eighty four years." <laughs> is that that's like how I felt waiting for this? I loved the original David Pumpkins. Okay, like I don't know why it works. It just works. It was exactly what I needed at the time. Just like the bartenders, it was so dumb and so hilarious. And every year since then, which I think was 2016, I have thought, this is the year. They're going to do David Pumpkins again. It's the Halloween show. And they <laughs> never do. <laughs> um, so I stopped expecting it. And they said, now we gotcha. Um, so I'm like, I'm watching this episode, right? And And it was an interesting choice. And some people weren't happy with it. But, you know, we saw Tom Hanks before David Pumpkins. And some people thought that was like a spoiler, but not for me. Because I was just like, hey, hold on. So Tom Hanks is here uh, in the AA meeting sketch, which, by the way, honorable mention, fantastic sketch, love that. Um, but Tom Hanks walks in and I go, wait, so so he's here, but he's not David Pumpkins. Like, that's weird. And I was thinking, like, maybe like they were going to do it and they cut it or something. And then Bobby Moynihan shows up on update. Great to see him. Love that. But I don't know, kind of random. And I forgot that Bobby is the other skeleton <laughs> until the end of update when I went, oh, my God. And I sat bolt upright on the couch and just went, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And Nathan, my husband, was next to me. And he was like, I don't think it is. <laughs> He's like, I think, I think you're getting excited and you need to calm down. Um, but I, I was just giddy. So then like it comes back from commercial. I see that they're getting on a ride and I'm like, this is it. Uh, and at that point they could do no wrong. I was too excited. Um, so, you know, is it beat for beat the exact same sketch? Pretty much. Yeah. But that said, I do think they changed up enough jokes. They added on to jokes in a way that I think, um, that elevated it and did make it different enough so that it's the same formula, but they're adding new details. The jokes are a little different, so you can still be surprised. Um, so I, I, I really, I thought it was great. I, I, um, it was different enough. Uh, and it just, it just feels like this great extension to me. And I'm just, I'm just very, very grateful <laughs> after all these years, I, I finally got what I wanted. So 
Win for me. What about you? I had a similar realization. It all fell together in my head. Like after weekend update, I'm thinking it was a commercial break or something. I'm like, well, Tom Hanks is there. I suppose they could do it, but they would need to get Bobby Moore. Oh, he's there too. (laughs) And, And it just clicked right there and then the next sketch was david s pumpkins Mm -hmm. it was uh pretty awesome to see and yes you're right it was different uh in in terms of written content uh definitely the same beats that we came to fall in love with because you know catherine you're not alone uh, myself and many others uh, we we had we were very impressed by david s pumpkins it stuck (laughs) with us uh, it clearly had, you know, it, it clearly had something special. So mm-hmm. uh, after after the cartoon, it's I think we came to expect another uh, appearance of David S. Pumpkins. And here we got it. Right. And yeah, while we don't get the exact same jokes like and the skeletons are part of it. Now it's right. and the skeletons are next to him. Right. <laughs> so they're, it's the same joke with different words, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's So you feel like you're in a David S. Pumpkin sketch, mm-hmm. uh, but you're not hearing the exact same stuff because I was afraid of that. You listen to yeah. the cartoon and, and they used part of it again. That, mm-hmm. that line was still there. They kind of reused a couple of lines, which is fine. They had to like fill out a half hour. They had work to do <laughs> elsewhere. Might as well <laughs> take right. a couple of free minutes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. The only complaint I would have is no Beck. Yeah. No Beck Bennett. Cause he was a well, great, uh, part of this sketch. I think his, <laughs> he was part of it. His, uh, his apoplexy at, uh, just trying to figure out who the hell David S. Pumpkins was, was so great. Mm-hmm. And he did it so expertly. Like, like you gotta be doing comedy for a while and be good at it to to do as well as Beck did. And now it's it's Jack Harlow doing it. So the I don't know. Well Dismukes was more of Beck's character. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess like. so. And Jack and then like you had Ego playing, I guess, sort of Kate McKinnon's character. And then Jack Harlow there just because they had to put the host in it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Which felt wedged and took away from mm-hmm. I don't know. I just feel like being the straight person is such a such a underrated talent, and you can't just mm-hmm. put someone who's who's not as apt in comedy is and not have it affect your sketch. Even if you have the comedic talent surrounding him, you still got to like pass the ball to him once in a while. Yeah, it's it's deceptively hard to play that role because it's if you're a comedian, you know how to do. Like the skeletons for a laugh. That's not, that's like, honestly, barely even acting. It's like, <laughs> um, it's just like being funny. And yeah. the, the, the voice of reason has to truly act the sketch, you know, like they have to have genuine reactions and, and dialogue that moves the scene along and that, yeah. that you have to deliver with some form of natural cadence. And so I think, I think Dismukes did a good job. I like, had we not originally seen Beck in it, I think we'd be like, yeah, that was a great role for Andrew, but Beck did it so well and knows is just animated enough and can convey. It's like, he can sound like he's yelling, but he's not actually yelling. He just like has so much frustration. Like he's just like holding it all in his chest, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, like Be- Beck was really, really great in that role. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, I mean, all that said, we loved it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just Very one. Good. One I didn't want to didn't want to be completely one hundred percent positive. That was just the one. <laughs> yeah, we little can't thing. Have Otherwise, we we loved it. Yes. Yeah. Very fair. All right. So that that that's the Jack Harlow episode. Let's move on into Amy Schumer. What did you think of uh, the selection of having Amy Schumer come back? It's a good selection. She's uh, what number is this? Do you know her, her third, third time? Maybe her third. third? Okay. Uh, yes, I've enjoyed all three of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, great monologue. 
I thought her uh, her jokes were fun. Uh, I feel like you go to certain corners of the internet and they they seem to think I shouldn't like Amy Schumer. <laughs> and uh, it's it's kind of weird because I feel mm-hmm. like it's it's almost vindictive in a way. <laughs> yeah. The way these people want you to dislike her and uh, accusing her of, of plagiarism. I, I, I don't like to see it as much. Because like I hear that more than I hear any of Amy Schumer's material. Mm-hmm. So, and then I go and listen to it and I'm like, what is everybody... <laughs> up in arms right. about it. I guess yeah. it's just because she's a woman. <laughs> that they're genuinely not to get on my soapbox, but there genuinely yeah. is just a lot of like misogyny involved because like half the time people are like, oh, she just has jokes about her vagina. And I'm like, okay, but you probably love penis jokes, don't you? Like <laughs> Yeah. It goes both ways. Okay. There's comedy <laughs> for everyone. Maybe it's for someone else if it's not uh doing it for you. Doesn't mean right. it's <laughs> doesn't mean it and, doesn't deserve to be out there. And then, like, there's the joke-stealing thing, which, like, jo- she was accused of, like, stealing John Mulaney jokes, and John Mulaney was like, no, she didn't. But mm. people still love to bring it up. <laughs> yep. As if, you know, the person who stole well, jokes be And they're still watching from. SNL, and, you know, uh, SNL has been accused of stealing jokes many a times, but they don't seem to hold it against them. True that. <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh, <laughs> that's how we feel about Amy Schumer. So that's we're happy to see her. She did a great job. And uh, yeah, I, I'd like to see her make it to five timers. It's a little bit slow going compared to some others. But uh, right. yeah, I think she'll, because uh, she's having a moment now, right? She's She's got her other show back. She's mm-hmm. got a new show and then her old show came back as well. So yeah, she's just yeah. everywhere now. So it makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, like like you said, it's very popular to hate Amy Schumer, but like I just I'm like I don't know, she's I'm not like I you know, I'm not like an avid Amy Schumer fan, but I think she's fine. Like I'm not It was like she ha- she had a big moment around the same time like Jennifer Lawrence did, and then everyone just collectively got tired of both of them and decided that everyone viciously hated both of them, and it was a very mm-hmm. weird thing that happened. Um but like I think she's I think she's great. She's she's good at sketch comedy. Like she's Every episode of SNL she's hosted has been very solid. Um, and I really liked her Hulu show, Life and Beth. I thought it was great. We sh- it showed like a completely different side to Amy Schumer. So, you know, I was excited. I was like, oh, okay. Like, is it, was it Taylor Swift hosting? No, nope. but like, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, it'll be a good episode. Let's do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what more could you ask for? Oh, man, no. This was, uh, this was more than enough for me. Had a, had, a, had a blast. Well, uh, on, on the note of uh, Amy Schumer, uh, Travis Kemp gave us some feedback on Twitter and wanted to point out a specific moment in her monologue. And he said, uh, she mentioned her husband is autistic. I can definitely relate because I'm mildly autistic myself. I hope that the comment about her husband will inspire people to learn more about autism so that they can better understand those who have it. If people want to learn more about autism, they should read books and articles on the subject as well as watch documentaries. So uh, thank you, Travis. I, I agree. I think it's, uh, you know, it's a thing. That a lot of people are not educated on like autism spectrum disorder, or, like what it means. And so I think it's it's great that she can kind of have this role as educator, but still like make great jokes. Like the joke about autism or man was was amazing. Um so I like that. And I haven't watched her um her special that was like a lot about him, but I'd really like to. So yeah. I watched their cooking show over the pandemic. Okay. That was nice. a lot of fun. Okay, well let's get into these sketches. Up first, Steve's pick. Is your daily routine getting you down? Do you need a break? Try COVID. Uh so why'd you pick this one? Uh I just thought it was a really well put together uh, little short. I thought everybody's performances in it elevated it. Every piece uh, of the ensemble was just so great. It had so many great little moments that worked, uh, you know, against and with uh, the uh, the cinematic style of this commercial. You know, it's very much 
selling you COVID as if it's some kind of, I guess, antidepressant or mm -hmm. <laughs> some kind of medication that's going to help you. It has, uh, it has the, uh, the pharmaceutical uh, commercial kind of vibe. And I thought it was, it was pretty funny to see, you know, first of all, like how everybody is so just ecstatic about having COVID and also just everybody who's, who's in their surrounding life, <laughs> how they're observing it and how they're reacting to it and how it affects like, you know, for example, Heidi's family, Andrew Dismukes looking through the window was, oh, <laughs> a great moment in just comedy history. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it, there were so many little just ideas that that this came together. They they really got a lot out of this concept. Yeah, there were there were a lot of really great jokes in here. I thought the um, the overall concept was just really clever. I think it's it's a fun take. It's a funny point of view, and they executed it really well. Like you said, um, I think all the beats were really clear. Like the heightening heightening to like the the always positive kit so like now you don't even have to have covid we'll just make it look like you have covid um <laughs> i think that's all really solid it's it this so this sketch so is is sort of that thing where it doesn't surprise you with with how it's funny you know it's not it's not david pumpkins that's so weird ha ha, ha. <laughs> it's that thing where you go oh that's true ha ha um and those things like these sketches are always interesting because I don't find that they're they're not usually like big belly laugh sketches, you know, for me at least. And they, they're, I'm not immediately like, can't wait to see that again. But over the long term, I feel like they're the ones I go back to the most. Like they have the the most staying power because you're not relying on an unexpected twist. You're just relying on like, oh, yeah, like remember that time and that punchline is so true and so accurate. Stuff like the uh, like the echo silver, something that's just like, ha ha ha, that's true about old people. and and it's not like, oh, my God, I'm dying, you know, laughing. But like you keep going back to it because those observations are just so great. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, I really liked the sketch. And I, and I just I think. While watching this is when I kind of had this realization of like, oh, that's interesting that this is like a specific type of like observational sketch. So I wanted to share. It's a well shared thought. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk about the uh, the next one. Big dumb hats. The perfect accessory for annoying women with straight hair between the ages of 20 and 45. Um, so, yeah, speaking of ha ha ha, that's so true sketches. This is so true. Um, <laughs> I, I love this. I think every little detail uh, in the jokes just hit perfectly it's it's a classic Allison Gates sketch in that way she's just so 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 good at picking up these tiny observations and spinning them into a punchline so like stuff like the brim is wide perfect for touching so you can see my engagement ring uh like if you see me at Starbucks you know it's oat milk like <laughs> those like those observations and just like really being able to distill the essence of these women down is is just brilliant um even like the song choice when they start dancing it being take me to church is is perfect um i loved like j even like the little heightens of like the props so like heidi's hat opens and has a little thing amy's hat brilliant. keeps getting yeah. bigger like yeah. those little details that like the sketch would have been perfectly fine without those details but like those prop those prop things those prop jokes were were just a perfect layer to add on top so this this is a format that that we've seen that like used to be a very popular like Allison Gates would write these with Anna Dresden and they would always start Kate in eighty. Um, they always pay off for me and I'm just really happy to see them living on into this new era of SNL we're in. Um, so yeah, big win, Steve. What do you think? I uh, I thought it was a big win as well, and. Like you said, just full of amazing observations. Uh, I think uh, the the big, big dumb hat type of um, person uh, exists in in most people's social circles, mm -hmm. and yeah, there's certainly a lot of correlations that uh, you know they've they've tapped into that are, are quite relatable. 
yeah, and that's okay. Maybe you're watching that and you're one of these big dumb hat people, and that's okay. It's you know, I don't think it's a bad look. Uh it just seems like, you know, when people have the common interests of like Etsy or uh <laughs> you know, certain uh Instagram accounts are popular among certain mm-hmm. people. Uh the fact that the content is the same, uh, you know, these people are are influenced in a similar way to dress a certain way. And, and that's why there's all these extra things you notice. Like you start with the hat, the type of person to be interested in this hat and think this is a good look for me. They probably saw all this other stuff on Etsy and on Instagram that every single other woman who wears this hat mm-hmm. is, is viewing. So yeah, it's, uh, it, <laughs> I think this is like a phenomenon of social media. Cause I can't remember a time where, where like style was so homogenized amongst so <laughs> certain social circles, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, what's a, another like very funny thing about this, and this was pointed out by um a, a person I follow on Instagram called named uh, Rosie Beam. Um, she's like a she's a fashion influencer, and she made this reel about how she's like I'm throwing out this hat. She's like I I why do I own this hat? No one has ever worn one of these hats not in a photo shoot like <laughs> and i was like that's i've never once seen a woman just wearing that hat i've only seen photos of women wearing the hat because yeah. i feel like they take them off afterwards <laughs> it's like a wedding dress you just buy it right you'd, you'd, you know you'd have your photo shoot and then you never wear it again yeah it's wild <laughs> Well, let's keep it on going to the Dave Chappelle episode. Oh, um, yes. I was pretty surprised by this. Were you surprised? Surprised by the announcement, you mean, or or yeah, just... yeah, yeah, by the choice to have to have him host here in 2022. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly some controversy that's mm-hmm. going around, and. Uh, you know, I'm not going to try to pretend that I know what it feels like as a cisgendered man. Uh, you know, it's not my fight. I got no dog in this fight. Uh, I I do have trans friends. Some of them are, you know, not so happy with Dave. Others are more like the people that Dave describes in his uh stand-ups of of trans people coming to his shows and enjoying them there seems to be people on both sides of the issue so Mm -hmm. yes it's polarizing and yes those who oppose it is very vocal and uh they probably have some very valid points i felt uh dave got a little combative uh in in some of his material that wasn't necessarily i don't know appropriate um and yes some of some of the jokes that Dave has done were like straight up transphobic, but I feel like the joke was that they were transphobic and there was a, a, a huge wink implied that he doesn't actually feel that way. Um, but yeah, it's a very complicated issue. And now he's going to give you a little smooch on your cheek. Yeah. Well, this, yeah, he's been whispering <laughs> all of this into my ear. What was that? Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's just been whispering. Uh, everything he wants me to say. Uh, <laughs> and if you want to get that joke, you're going to have to tune in on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what are they talking you can about? Get, you can get that joke. You can see Steve's naked body <laughs> and more. <laughs> I think I felt my ear get nibbled a bit. Oh. Now they're really wondering. They're going to, yeah. they're going to, they're going to watch. They're going to watch. Um. Well, I was, I was pretty surprised by this. I thought, you know, um, I found Dave to be pretty problematic as of late. Uh, not just with the transphobic stuff. Like even his last SNL monologue, I was like, "Are you gonna? Are there gonna be jokes in this?" Or um, <laughs> so I don't know. I, but then you know, after that, you know, he he's kind of doubled down on it. Um, I you know, so I was just I was surprised to see it because they're also like. It's not like he's promoting anything. I didn't think the 
the midterms were quite on the same level as like the presidential election where he's kind of become the go-to host. Uh, so I was like, oh, that's that's a choice. Um, you know, it, I, it turned out once he got there, I think, you know, he um, he had mostly been been reined in. He stayed away from those specific jokes. He told a lot more that were maybe troubling in a new way. <laughs> um, but <laughs> Uh, and there we have a whole other can open. <laughs> but, you know, the, the sketches in the episode were, I thought, very solid. You know, Chappelle's a, a, a sketch comedian, at, you know, at his core. I, I mean, I guess he's probably he started in stand up, but, you know, it's just Chappelle's so what's sketch show. That's how I came to know him. So he's good at it. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I, was, I was surprised, but I did try to go into it with an open mind to see, you know, what it would turn out to be. and. On the whole, I was like, okay, yeah, it was a good episode. So let's talk about the sketches, eh? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about some of them anyway. The House of Dragons gets a visit from some of Chappelle's most memorable characters. Steve, why'd you pick this one? Well, most of this episode was very run-of-the-mill SNL, but as it often is when Dave hosts... There's a little bit of a uh, injection of Chappelle's show DNA into uh, into the SNL uh, mm-hmm. petri dish. So I felt uh, this was worth talking about since it's kind of a unique thing for the host. Uh, also because it's kind of interesting in how disjointed it felt, and I felt like that was something worth mentioning. I don't know if you felt it, but this. <laughs> <laughs> kind of felt like a sketch they had been working on mm-hmm. when Dave walked in on the scene and said, Hey, this, this sketch that you're halfway through shooting, can I uh, just insert all of my old Chappelle show characters? Into yeah. It? It's a full, it's, it's two and a half minutes in before the first Chappelle show character shows up. It's a full sketch of its own game and own jokes yeah. before he ever gets there. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's, it's making jokes. It's funny. It has its own premise mm-hmm. that would work for a whole short. If it never went in that direction. <laughs> and and I, then feel it does. Like, I feel like it was something he didn't decide on doing until it was like, Almost ready to uh, <laughs> <laughs> like say that's action. Re- oh, okay. He's here now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like they talked him into doing another one of these late in the game. And they're like, let's just repurpose this thing we've we've shot. Because, um, yeah, like <laughs> if this is what you had ready to go, this would probably be the sketch that you could most easily tailor into a showcase for Dave Chappelle characters. So there's that, and plus, this just didn't land for me. And maybe I'm oh, okay. Maybe it's because when we saw Dave Chappelle bring these characters back the first time, it had been a very, very long time <laughs> since right. it happened. And now that is happening, now we're we're looking back to that as the most recent time. So it's a smaller gap. Smaller disparity. I don't think anybody was missing these characters as much. Um, plus, he didn't do very many. Uh, instead of getting like an extra couple, we got like an iced tea uh, cameo. And uh, I mean, have Donnell Rollins there. Absolutely. That, that, you know, that needs to be done. Do more of that. Uh, yeah, I just feel like with the runtime, if you saw this on paper, you would think there would be a lot more of Dave Chappelle's characters in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I think circles back to our original suspicions that we just talked about. Especially since it like they took the time out to also have him intro it. Like, so there's there's a lot there's a lot going on for not that much Dave Chappelle. Right. And that intro, thank you for reminding me, that intro makes you expect it fully. So mm-hmm. It's a weird feeling you're left with after a couple of minutes. And you're like, <laughs> right. He, he did introduce this, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm. I mean, I think, I think ultimately it was, it was, it was a good time. Um, it's the same deal as like that walking dead when they did, I think in like 2016. Um, 
after my take on David Pumpkins, I don't know that I have the right to complain about it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I don't I don't watch Game of Thrones or House of Dragons, whatever it is. Um, so this wasn't really for me. But it seemed like they were definitely finding fun, like Game of Thrones details to throw at these Chappelle characters, like the guy like using the dragon to uh, to cook his crack um, which is not a <laughs> sentence i ever thought i would say uh, but i mean it they what's interesting is watching it live last night i was like uh, but re-watching it had a lot more value because i think they made a lot of improvements to it um in the live version i don't know if you caught it live but their um the the sound mix was off the audience was way too loud to the point where you could not hear what the characters were saying and there wasn't enough space for the audience laughter to like die out um before like they were saying lines and stuff like it was it was cut a little too quick uh and then you it, a lot was getting lost um so it it definitely is mixed better in like the YouTube Peacock version and then the other tiniest little thing and only editors I think would ever notice this. So this is just for me um, at the end when the dragon is getting pulled over by the police, they have the flashing red and blue lights. Right. Uh, but in the live version, you could only see the lights on the dragon and on Chappelle oh. because I assume that was, uh, that was its own layer in the, in the build of the uh, final cut file. Um, but they fixed that to where now the, it goes across the whole screen. Um, so that's just a fun little note for me <laughs> and any other video editors out there. Uh, they did, they did fix that. And I, I was like, Oh, interesting. Um, a little, a little thing. It's, it's always fun to catch those little things because it's, it's a miracle that they got this edited in time to start with. Like the fact that any of this was done is amazing. So like, it's always, it's, I, I find it fun to like catch like, Oh, like they, they, there's a thing, you know? And then miraculously they have it fixed by the time it gets uploaded to YouTube like an hour later. Um, right. The SNL post-production team. Incredible. So good. Yep. So yeah, the I mean, first time you see like a rougher version uh, mm -hmm. when it goes alive. You remember that Star Wars one that straight up still had green screen Just had green footage. screen, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it it's happens. always, yeah, it's always the more ambitious stuff like this with a lot of effects. They, uh, mm -hmm. Like, look at the makeup job. I say makeup, but it was pretty much a, a digital uh, digital mask that James Austin Johnson was wearing for all the mm -hmm. rotting face stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you could tell they were compositing, like, Dave Chappelle onto existing dragon footage, like, from the show and then had to track it to that. Like, there was a lot of special effects stuff happening in this. Like, it was a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that The production design on this was great. I think, you know, if you... If you were itching to see these characters, then this was probably a big win. If you were just like, eh, okay, then the first half might have worked better for you. <laughs> I, I loved what they were doing with James's character. I, I loved those. Even not watching the show, I got what they were doing. I thought that was brilliant. So there were things to like here. Things to like for sure. All right. Up next, Dave takes a break and tags in Mikey to play his role in the Black Heaven sketch. And uh, I picked this one because... I just thought it was really creative. Um, like I, I really love it when a sketch feels like it could only be done this week. Like this was written for the Dave Chappelle episode and it is unique and special in that way. You know, they couldn't do this with Jack Harlow. They couldn't do this with Amy Schumer. This, it was for this week. And I, and I, I love that. And I think it's the perfect use of this specific host. And then not only is it perfect for this host, let's also turn that on its head and actually take the host out of it. Um, I just think that's so creative and it, and it paid off to such great effect uh, by putting Mikey in there. So like the joke, the jokes were good. The sketch was fine. But what I really loved was just how creative and unique it was. So uh are you are you on my same page what do you have to say about it pretty much yeah this was good stuff and there were some clever uh little devices used there was a interesting fake out that makes you think that devin walker is going to be dave mm -hmm. Chappelle's character uh which is obviously not the case as it turns out and we get mikey doing it uh just a great idea to use mikey for this he's got that nervousness down pat 
and mm-hmm. he is unfortunately a good type uh to put in uncomfortable situations so <laughs> i hope he enjoys doing it because uh it's just what he's born to do it was uh just starting to uh lose some steam when they started cutting to Dave which uh brought some life back into it again we saw Donnell live which was nice he got a great mm-hmm. response uh but that's what I loved about it is that you you know this is a bad idea you know that Dave knows it's a bad idea <laughs> Dave's doing it because it's a Dave a bad idea and that is funny to him there's like a very Andy Kaufman level of reflexivity to this sketch that makes it funny. Uh, So yeah, there's, there's more, more cerebral stuff going here than it might uh, beat the eye. Yeah. It's more than just a white guy trying to do, uh, (laughs) trying to do urban uh, vernacular uh, while clearly not wanting to be there. Yes, that's a big joke of it, and that that plays for laughs. But uh, I think the whole the whole picture of it is just brilliant. Yeah, there's levels. There's levels here. Levels, Jerry. There's depth. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we've got to say about the Chappelle episode. Let's let's move on. And talk about this this run as a whole. Uh, up first, we let's check in on how we feel about the featured players. Uh, do you have any, what is your assessment so far on our featured players? Uh, featured players have been continuing to do well, at least most of them. Mm-hmm. Marcelo definitely had a great, uh, great moment uh, as his uh, <laughs> Cuban guy running for president. Mm-hmm. Uh, God love him. You, you you want him to <laughs> succeed, even though, you know, it's not uh, stacked in his favor. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was great. Uh, I thought uh, he did well. I thought Michael Longfellow got a great little uh, moment in Dave Chappelle's episode, mm-hmm. um, being part of that barbershop sketch. Uh, Molly was great in the Please Don't Destroy, destroy sketch. We're having a, a, a good little... Good little bit of uh, screen time taken out for these new people. Yep. It's great to see. I think they're uh, holding their weight. And uh, we still got a lot more show left. So, yeah, some some others might. Uh, I'd like to see more from Devin. And uh, I, I, I think he's at least feeling a bit more natural uh, in what we see him in. Like we were talking about some nerves that he might have had in his first uh, mm-hmm. his first uh, weekend update panel, but he seems to be uh, taking the reins a little bit. So we see a little mm-hmm. bit more from him. Uh, I think uh, I think everybody's in good shape after that. So uh, yeah, yeah I, good hires, good hires. It seems. Yeah, everyone everyone's still having pretty strong starts. We're seeing a lot more of all of them than I think we've seen of featured players in a long time. Yeah. Um. I mean, obviously, like James had a pretty strong start, and but in, in Sarah too. But even so, like I wouldn't say they were as integrated into the show as much as they were doing. They were doing their own thing a lot. Like we were seeing uh, James as Biden, we were seeing Sarah doing Sarah, but we weren't seeing them thrown into just random roles and sketches that could have gone to other people. Like we, what we're seeing with Michael Longfellow, mm-hmm. you know, he he was like even that like table bartender sketch. It would have been really easy to throw in. Dismukes, or you know, um, or Mikey, or anybody, but um, instead they gave that role to Michael Longfellow, um, and I, I think that's great. I think that's that's awesome. I do think Michael uh, seems to be I, he seems to be having the strongest start to me. Like he there, he had a great update feature, and they seem to be putting him just in a lot of sketches. You know, I think uh, Marcelo's having a really strong start. I agree that Devin is sort of. And uh, and Molly is doing great. Like they have, they've had another featured sketch uh, with the please don't destroy guys. Um, but De- Devin seems to be not getting quite as much. And when he is on, doesn't seem as comfortable. Like Michael Longfellow has been in these pieces and he's been doing really great in them. Whereas I feel like when Devin goes in, he, 
he doesn't feel like he knows what to do because he's like he's a stand up. Right. Um, so like even with like the Black Heaven sketch and he was having to play a voice of reason character, which, as I said before, is deceptively hard to do. You know, it didn't. He didn't he didn't come across as natural as, say, Keenan or Ego did. Uh, there's plenty of room to grow. Uh, and I think he's a very, very funny guy. Like I said before, when I saw his audition, he was one of the stand ups where I said, oh, he's funny. Like, he's great. You know, so I think I think he's got a great future ahead of him. He's just like he's he's taking a little longer to like get his sea legs, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited for all all these people. And then let's talk about Sarah Sherman, still technically a featured player. Uh, but that uh, Sarah's news on update. Do do we think Sarah's gunning for a weekend update anchor spot? I don't know. I don't. Th- <laughs> You would really have to retool weekend update. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know if I want to see the Sarah Sherman skin on weekend update with all the viscera and, and guts that mm-hmm. <laughs> seem to make up her uh her set pe- her sets and her uh, her logos and stuff like there there were bowel borders and and <laughs> severed eyes with the, mm-hmm. with the little stem sticking off of them. Uh, yeah, D- definitely uh straight up acknowledgement of her body horror uh, style of comedy. It's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. It's, uh, it's, it's so nice to see SNL just embrace that. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, every time she comes back to the SNL desk and does something a little bit different. Uh, with her whole like <laughs> almost like gonzo journalism uh like she she feels like indie like like i i i'm 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 there's like a few journalists like around town where i live where they they just have their own website right mm-hmm. and they just write stories about what they want to write and, and they have no uh, no censorship not Nobody's telling them what they have right about. There's no agenda. So like <laughs> sometimes stuff can get really crazy and, and weird. Mm-hmm. And this is what this reminds me of. It's like someone who decided is like, I'm going to just start giving the news and I'm nuts. So my news is going to be nuts. <laughs> yeah. But this, I don't know. I feel like if you, if you strip back all those layers of like the seratization of it. Yeah. She was sitting at the desk, just delivering update style jokes and like, doing so very well so like i don't know i think there i think there could be an argument for sarah as update anchor i don't think i would i as great as she is at it i would just much rather see her being crazy all over the show because yeah. i feel um, like if she did it, but it was proper yeah if she did a proper weekend update i think they'd have to tone down the sarahness of it all mm-hmm. and I would wonder if she would want to do that. Would she get she would she get bored doing a more team version of that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about the repertory players. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll say Travis Kemp chimed in with another comment to say it's good to see Cecily Strong back on the show. I enjoyed her commentary as Tammy the Trucker. It was nothing short of courageous. Uh, to which I would agree. I'm really loving. I'm enjoying having Cecily back. Uh, and I think we we talked about last time a little bit. Um, we did. We said we're like we, we didn't need Cecily back. You know, we felt like the show was in really good hands. I stand by that. I did not need Cecily back, but I'm enjoying seeing her. She's just a great performer. You know, she's I'm the uh, the Arizona governor candidate. I believe it is that she's been playing has been really fun. And I I I did really enjoy Tammy the trucker who's here to talk about gas prices and definitely not abortion. Um, I was it as unexpected and um poignant as goober the clown i don't think so but did it make points was it very funny did i enjoy it absolutely like i I do think it was courageous i and i hope she does continue to use her platform um and yeah i I, so yeah are are you enjoying cecily are you enjoying having cecily back or do you still feel like you didn't need her um well i guess the show will always survive losing anybody that's why it's so damn old at this point. But yeah, I like having Cecily there. There's not really anyone else doing Cecily stuff, which mm-hmm. was really evident when she wasn't there. 
uh, for a few episodes and then came back and then started doing very Cecily cut characters right away. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, yes, this is why Cecily, uh, you know, is a, is a one in a million talent. I kind of liked not having her there for a bit because as much as I like what Cecily does, I know what Cecily does. Mm-hmm. So the fact that she had all that seniority that net, that needed to be respected, um, not having her there for the first three episodes uh, just made things easier because like I wouldn't want Cecily to be there then not give her very much screen time mm-hmm. to give, all, give it all to these, uh, these newcomers. So I think it worked out well for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Cecily can now have her, her, big girl moments uh but she was just stepped aside for the moment yeah and then other repertory players you know i think i think heidi ego and chloe continue to have great screen time great moments uh but the thing bowen of course is great uh but dismukes andrew dismukes has really been stepping up we're seeing a lot of andrew dismukes and he's doing really well like I, i know we talked before about how he wasn't quite at the level that, say, Beck Bennett was in the David Pumpkin sketch, but he was really good in that sketch. You're comparing him, you know, it's not it's not a fair comparison, but, you know, and then stuff like um, the COVID commercial, like him looking through that window is so funny. The way he said, like, don't do this again. It's like just great. And I'm, I'm really enjoying seeing a lot of Andrew Dismuke because I think he's so funny. He's such a nice guy. And like, just like when he first started, it was it was kind of a slow burn on him. I think a lot of people were like, oh, that guy's here. But now he, he's he's moved on. He's in the next step now. We're seeing more of him. I think people are starting to recognize him more and trust him more just in those like sort of voice of reason roles, just like throwing him in here and there. Um, so, yeah, that's been that's been great to see as well. Do you have anybody else you would like to mention? No, because then I just have to mention everybody and every single thing they did. <laughs> We'll be here just recounting the entire three episodes worth of content. (laughs) Very good. Well, then let's talk about the writers. How are you feeling about the the writing over these three episodes? We were over the first three. We were all sort of me, you and Pat on the same page of like it's had moments, but we didn't think it was the strongest. So do you how do you think it compares in these three episodes? It wasn't as glaring. I feel I feel Mm -hmm. like it was. uh more consistently good and i felt like the ideas were better there were like whole sketches where i was like i wish this wasn't attempted (laughs) (laughs) i I never felt this way uh, or or certainly not as much with these three Mm -hmm. i felt like every sketch was at least a decent enough idea to pursue and i understood its merit and why it was chosen Mm -hmm. to take up time on this very coveted hour and a half of uh airtime maybe i'd like to see more of an improvement as time goes on not to say like everything's better and and we're cured but uh i'm seeing a an incline in trends yeah i agree i think this was uh this was an improvement like you said i think more consistent is really the perfect way to put it um significantly more consistent episodes um I, th- I think these were all much stronger and more creative. Like you said, the, the premises I feel like were much better. I think um, there were more unique approaches, more unique um, voices coming through and just paired really well with some tried and true formats. We got David pumpkins again, that Chappelle thing we already talked about. The big dumb hats is a format we know and love. So, but then thrown in there was some new stuff that was working really well. Um, so yeah, I thought, I thought these episodes were much better. Um, Alex English, I was looking at the list of credits. Alex English seems to be doing some heavier lifting, uh, in these three episodes and, uh, maybe we need more of that. Maybe that's the key there. So yeah, I, I, I I think the, the, the writing is improving and I'm, I'm eager to see a lot of our new there. I've noticed that some of the new writers are getting, getting more credits under them. And I'm, I'm learning a little bit more about what their voices are, what their takes are. Um, and I'm just excited to, to see more and really be able to pinpoint it. So maybe in the, in the next run of three, I'll be able to tell you exactly like, Oh yeah, this person, this is their thing. You know, that, right. that's the fun of the show to me. Yeah. goes to show you just how intensive the whole cycle is. You know, you go through three mm-hmm. of them 
and all of a sudden you're a grizzled veteran and you're just pumping right. out <laughs> great scripts. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's touch on the musical guest. Do you have anything to say about the musical guest? What could I say? Like that was most deaf, right? Yeah. Uh, in uh, what are they called? Dark star. Black. Black star. Black star. Um. And yeah, and apparently most deaf isn't going by most deaf anymore. But yes, it was most deaf. Oh, what is he now? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Or is it? Or is he dark star or black star? No, black star is the band, but most deaf is going. It's like Yasim something. Oh, okay. So he's like, it's Islam. Yeah, sounds like. All right. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I enjoyed those guys. Um, I don't know so much about. What's his name? Steve Lilly? Steve Lacey. Steve Lacey. Yeah. I heard him on a couple of Vampire Weekend tracks that I really enjoyed. So I was looking forward to listening to him. But uh, maybe I need to acquire the taste of Steve Lacey because I was not really taken by his songs. I I was a little bit bored, if I'm going to be honest. Steve Lacey to me is one of those musical guests where I'm like, wow, if I had just heard this in the wild, I think I'd really enjoy this music. It's like, it's a style I like, um, good songs, but on SNL, like you said, it can just be a little boring. Like you're used to just like very quick, high energy (laughs) sketch comedy. And then it's just like, uh, you know, kind of a bluesy, more ballady feel to it. And, um, so it, it is always interesting when those people come on. That's that's just that's a performance I'd like to be in the same room as. I think I mm-hmm. think I would enjoy it a lot more if I felt yeah. the live in person energy of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Something yeah. got lost on the way to me. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, well let's uh, let's get into our ratings then. With that said, let's get into these ratings. Up first, the most memorable moment of the run. What is it, Steve? I had a great time with a, a certain moment uh, in the potato hole sketch from Chappelle's show, uh, the Chappelle show episode. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, and it's, it's a new guy. It's Michael Logfellow had a really great moment, you know, when he finally was forced to explain what a potato hole was. Michael uh, was, was basically holding his pose from his yeah. previous shot. So he's in mid golf swing and it was perfect because we had already seen, he was the last of the, uh, uh, broadcasters to be shown the reaction. So it was great. We're already mm-hmm. laughing at everybody looking uncomfortable and to see him just frozen like that was, mm-hmm. was perfect. It was, yeah. uh, just a great moment. My, my moment, uh, is a little more meta. Uh, it's, it's the moment that I pieced together. Bobby's here. Bobby's here. Tom is here. <laughs> David Pumpkins is happening. When I realized David Pumpkins was happening, it was better than the fe- the moment that any single sketch could have. <laughs> it, it was it was eighty four years of waiting, knowing it was about to pay off. <laughs> Just pure unadulterated joy. I cried. I cried tears of joy. <laughs> like I'm not joking. So yeah. that was that was a big moment for me. <laughs> All right. Up next is the standout sketch. Uh, what was it? I feel like it was the COVID one. My standout sketch. I've talked enough about David Pumpkin, so I won't do that to you. Um, to me, the, the next two runners up of being just like really good, really rewatchable would be the AA meeting where he pitches the Pixar movie and ah, yes. the, the Looker, which is a parody of The Watcher. And um, let me go with the looker. I yeah, think the looker the was looker. a really standout sketch. It was produced really well. <laughs> it was a great parody, and it was just like a really funny take. A very it was it was good for the host. It was good for Amy Schumer. Um, and yeah, I just had a lot of fun with it. It was shareable. Like I sent it to a few friends. So I'll go with the looker for standout sketch. So what? All right, best best host. Best host. Yeah, uh, Chappelle. I'll give it to Amy Schumer. Okay, yeah. Give it to each uh, of the comedians. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, sh- I think 
they both they both were great episodes. The thing about Chappelle is he takes over the episode to the extent that it almost it is such a Chappelle show episode. Yeah. Uh, like Amy, I think is it still feel it has much more SNL to it. It has in just like sheer number of sketches. Like Chappelle did a fifteen minute monologue and then introed a few sketches, and you know that takes away from the the clock of sketches you can get. So I think we've got more content with Amy. Um. So yeah, that's that's, that's why I would give Amy the edge. In addition to you know his monologue being questionable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, best musical guest. I guess it was Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow was uh, the best of the three, I guess. I mean, you love country music, so that makes sense. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Jack Harlow, he knows how to <laughs> strum that steel guitar. Uh, I'll give my best musical guest to uh, Steve Lacey. Even though I didn't... I didn't like really connect with him on in the performance. I do like I've heard his music since then and been like, oh, okay, yeah, I actually I like this more than I thought I did. Um, so yeah, okay. also Steve Lacey, and it was a new artist I hadn't heard I hadn't heard him at all before um, the episode. So it introduced me to something new, which is nice. Let's talk yep. about the MVP. Who's it going to? Oh gee, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I want to give it to Bowen. Just because Bowen has been uh, such a star this season. And I feel like he's really taken over uh, some roles that, you know, he was in the in the bloodline to, to take over. There's, there's a lot mm-hmm. of house cleaning that has been done. Uh, Bowen has very quickly gained some seniority. It still feels like he's like a new hire almost. But so many yeah. people have left since he's come on the show. And yeah, I mean, he was never bad. And I think he's getting what he deserves now. It's just really great to see. I always love Bowen. Uh, he's he's wonderful. I'm going to give my MVP to Cecily. Uh, it's It's been fun to have her back. Nah. I think we've gotten yeah. some, some Cecily characters, like some uniquely Cecily things on. Um, and I don't know, she she brought more back than I thought. She, like, I thought we haven't really missed her. Um, she's always welcome back, but we don't need her. But she has brought something a little fresh that I think I, I've enjoyed seeing more of more than I thought I would. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Cecily's always great. All right. The big one <laughs> on a scale of must see TV, Sunday morning Peacock, catch the highlights on YouTube or Saturday night dead. How would you rate these three episodes? I think we got Sunday Peacock. Uh, we've had some of SNL's best hosts of recent times back on the show, but maybe not the best episodes of those great hosts. Mm-hmm. I've seen better Dave Chappelle episodes. I've seen better Amy Schumer episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's Jack Harlow. So <laughs> <laughs> here we are. <laughs> And then he did what he could do. And that's, I think, I think that's generous at at this, uh, at this point of of what we're dealing with. So uh, I forget what we, what kind of, we were probably harsh on that first three. I forget what we uh, did, but I I want to say. I think we said highlights on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Because I wanted it to be a better rating. Than, than the yeah. last three so i think yeah i think this is fair yeah i agree i think this is sunday morning peacock uh because are there some weaker sketches in 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 this bunch absolutely but on the whole i think they were very consistent i think they were much much better than the last three just really solid stuff and a, and enough enough highlight sketches from each episode that like individual youtube links would be tiring right <laughs> so you know um so I, I think these were there was something there was enough to like in each one that I'm like, yeah, catch the full episode. That'll be that'll be a good time for you. On the um, whole. Yeah. Potato on the whole. hole. Potato. <laughs> we're not allowed to say that. Steve. <laughs> oh, OK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, on that note, that is a wrap. Thanks to Steve, Finn, and thanks as well to our most generous patrons, 
Justin Gardner, Grace Kogan, and Brian Clark. If you're enjoying our show, please subscribe on YouTube or wherever better podcasts can be found. Your subscription helps us grow and your support is greatly appreciated. We'll be back in December to discuss SNL's next run of shows. But until then, this has been episode number 166 of the Saturday Night Live After Party Podcast. I'm Catherine Coleman. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Woo! <laughs>